What up, y'all? Another weeknight, another pod. Here we are. This is weeknights. I am JD, aka He Who Pods. Glasses on, so also rear view mirror. And I'm Dash, aka Dashing D. What up, everybody? Well, it's been a hell of a week. Yeah. And the week's almost over. But not before we play you something that we have to discuss. Because at the end of the week, the week got to end. Yeah. And some other things might have to end too. So let's just play you the audio here. Um, This is... Oh, uh, can I see his name without it playing? Hold on. Let me see. Okay, yeah. So this is... Country singer and CMA host Luke Bryan recently sat down with Andy Cohen, who inquired about Bryan's thoughts on Beyonce not receiving any nominations for her country album. Mm -hmm. So this is audio from that, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So I, I'm all for everybody coming in and making country albums and all that. Yeah. But just by declaring that, um, just because she made one, doesn't mean that I don't need. Just because I make one, I don't. I don't get any nominations. A right. lot of. Right. I mean, a lot. A, a lot of great music is somehow sometimes overlooked. A lot of yeah. great music's overlooked. Sometimes True. you don't get nominated. Sometimes, um, um, it. So I. Like I said, I mean, I think the CMA they have their voting body yeah. and they they vote what they think yeah. should make it. Everybody loved that Beyonce made a country album. Yeah, okay. Everybody's mad about it. Yeah, but all right. Where things get a little tricky and and where they get tricky. If you're gonna make country albums, come into our world and be country with us a little bit. Uh huh. Like don't. <laughs> Like Beyonce can do it exactly what she wants. She, she's yes. probably the biggest star in music. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. come to an award show and high five us. Yeah. And have yeah. fun and get in the family too. I'm all for everybody. Luke Bryan, y'all. Luke Bryan. Now, I have a question for Luke Bryan. Luke, I hear you. I do. But did y'all invite her in? Because what I see here, if I could be honest, is that, well, the thing about black people is we invite you in. We want so badly to let you into the cookout. We want so badly to say, come on down. Or you do, you sound good. You, you can hold a tune and we say, okay, we'll make a song with you. We'll make albums with you. You can come to our award shows. We'll even give you awards. We'll invite you in. But the question is, did they invite her in? And I think that's the big difference between Black people and our culture and our art and entertainment is that we always make room to let people who are not like us in. And on the other side, whether he's right or wrong about how much she participated or didn't participate, the question is, did you make her feel welcome? Did you make her feel that she was welcome to the hoedown? Because maybe that's why. Maybe that's why she kept her distance. Maybe that's why she wasn't trying to hang out with y'all. Because from what I understand, anytime that she has tried to step into that space, it is everyone who is a part of that culture, with the exception of a few, that have welcomed her in. The sad part about this is that I think that he made some interesting points and some points that we'd probably make over here about hip hop or about R&B or about anything that falls under our culture's umbrella, which 
if you do your homework, country does as well. But that's the flaw. That's where the flaw is in this whole thing. That's where the snag is with what he said. Because I think he was actually fairly kind to her with what he said. The problem here is, I don't know that anybody tried to let her in or tried to, you know, hang out with her and, you know, bring her in. And and I don't know that when you are the outsider that it doesn't go both ways. I think it does go, go both ways. I think you can express interest in it, but I think people can also express interest in you. Come on, you look like you got one more piece you want to say. No. I say you've done you done frying them up. I just it just kind of it's like I'm not saying like I'm not even saying it's a race thing. I want to be clear about that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I think it's a culture thing more than anything else. And I think that we are way too welcoming. And so we are confused when people don't welcome us. But the reality of the situation is we are far more welcoming. And people don't just let you into spaces just because. Just because you did a thing. It doesn't happen that way. And it's unfortunate that it doesn't happen that way. But that's why, you know, I say all the time, fuck inviting people to the cookout. Do they think of us when they have their rodeo? Do they think of us when they have their hoedowns? Their honky tonks? Do they think of us? Do they say, hey guys, come on down, come join us? Did somebody say, hey, we're doing this thing at the at the at the barn or whatever? Beyonce, you wanna come? Did Luke Bryan invite her to do a little something with him? I just don't think that it is that simple and I think that in his effort to be kind I think he oversimplified a bigger problem and maybe people don't even consider it a problem but I am the first person to say that I don't think that you just get everything or I don't think that Beyonce is hard up for awards or accolades. I don't think she is. Mm -hmm. But let's be serious here. Let's be honest about what's happening here. Y'all didn't like that she made a country album. You could sit there and say all you want. You like that she made a country album. I don't believe that all of y'all like that she made a country album. I think, I think some thought that she was trying to take from them. And I don't really think it even sure we could have the conversation about how the, about the fact that she's a black woman, but we don't even need to. She's the biggest star, like he said, arguably the biggest star in the world. And what that means is that people are always going to feel a way about that. They're going to feel like she's trying to take if she comes into the space and she gets then she's taken away from everybody else. And I'm not saying that that is not a valid feeling to have. All I'm saying is, I don't know how welcomed she was. And that seems to be his argument here. That she, she, did not, she, she did not try to acclimate herself. She did not try to come into their space. Did you, did you open the door? Because the album was her knocking. Did you open the door? That's all. So I'm going to I'm going to come at this a little different, but I just want to say, man, um, I almost got up and got the frying pan for you because you was definitely cooking just now. you know. And that's why I just shut up and just let you go off. Because as a good co-host, sometimes you just got to let niggas go off. I so. I understand that. As an artist. Um, it gets a little, it gets a little weird. I understand his point of, you know, 
you should try to be part of the culture if you're going to drop the music. Right? If if a country artist drop a rap album today, we're going to be a little confused. And we're going to look for how they operate in our spaces. We're going to look at who they know in our spaces. We're going to want them to kind of go through some of the same things our artists have gone through, right? Like we want we want to see you perform at the local spot. You know, we're not gonna just ex- we're not just gonna be excited if you show up at the Grammys and perform your single. We're gonna be like, yeah, but but Garth Brooks though, like you ain't you ain't got no bar. You, you can't just you can't just show up and do this, Garth Brooks. We're gonna be a little confused and we're gonna wonder. Did anybody see Garth Brooks perform at the hip hop spot in Nashville? I'm only I'm only using Garth Brooks as an example. My point is, let's say Luke Bryan. If Luke Bryan decides he's going to put out a hip hop album, we're going to want to see him, you know, doing some hip hop esque things. And so I can understand what he's saying, but um. I, even when he said, come hi, come to an award show and high five us. I thought that was funny. I didn't think that was the worst part in the world. But um, it's almost like he's accusing her of cultural appropriation. And that's where it gets a little weird for me because, you know, the thing is, Beyonce grew up in a place where country music is very prevalent. and. Beyonce dropping this country album has made the world look at country music in a way that it wasn't looking at it for a while. Put it on the world stage. And although I hear some of the things he's saying and kind of understand them as an artist myself, yeah, an artist puts out music, you got to get in the mix, you got to go hit stages, you got to go, as my good friend Daze Denver would say, you got to touch the people. Um. But the thing is, it's Beyonce. And Beyonce has shed a huge spotlight on country music by doing this. And so she kind of she kind of helped y'all out. Not only did she kind of help y'all out, um, you know, allegedly she missed the deadline to be part of the CMA's uh consideration for awards and if all she did was miss the deadline they really you didn't really have to say shit and i would think you know that as one of the hosts of the upcoming cmas and so i just wonder why he didn't shut up also (laughs) and his name is all over the news today that's why. That's why. Because 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 the reality of the situation is now everybody's talking about him. People who wouldn't normally talk about him. Why would we ever talk about Luke Bryan? I'm sure he's a lovely man, but why would we ever talk about him? It's 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 all it, it it's all a part of the same cog that just keeps going around and around and around and around and around. He benefits from this. He gets his press run. He gets to talk about Beyonce. Keep, how about keep Beyonce's name out your mouth? How about that? Keep my wife's name. Right. Sorry, I couldn't help it. But, so listen, um, I think that uh, Beyonce doing this album was controversial. I think she knew that. And I think that you know, some people embraced her. Some people did not. That's that's neither here nor there. Excuse moi. Some people embraced her. Some people didn't. That's neither here nor there. But um, I think this was a this was a bad idea to uh, say this as as somebody who's a star of country music, as somebody who's the upcoming host or one of the hosts. Um, 
I don't, again, I don't think he's all the way wrong. I understand a lot of what he's saying as an artist. And so, I mean, I get up here all the time and say Drake is a pop star. I don't want to hear y'all say rap stuff about him. So I understand some of the things he's saying, but he didn't have to say them. And uh, honestly, Beyonce can do whatever the fuck she wants, which he said. And also, um, it was a good ass album. She made all of us listen to country music, and we haven't. Yeah. We ain't listened to country music since Garth Brooks was all over the radio, and we couldn't stop hearing him. And I mean, look, look, look at Shabuzi out here getting all the love, and he even knows. Hey, this is partially because of Beyonce. Oh, and so a lot of the artists that she's she worked with, and she kind of sh- shine sh- shine a light on during this whole thing have praised her and said that they're grateful that she did what she did because people are paying attention to them. I mean, Tanner Adele performed at the BET Awards and that that's not on brand for, for that sort of show. So I think what she did was revolutionary and people may not. That's a, I think that's a reach, but okay. I, I think, I think it is. I think it is. I, I think that I don't think there's a reach at all. I think that a lot of people make music. I think that even when she made Renaissance, Renaissance was cool and people loved Renaissance, but it wasn't it didn't It's not to say it didn't have global impact. It's just that this when I say it's revolutionary, it's it's what you said. We're probably in closer proximity and not as far as history goes, but just in general, we're probably in closer proximity to her dance album than we were to her country album until we all listened to it. Like, okay. for a lot of people, if it wasn't Beyonce, a lot more people, not more, but there were a lot of people who probably would have and you pre- presented them with a dance album and a country album, there are a lot of people who probably would have picked the dance album. So what I'm trying to say is, I think your point of her being able to impact so many people and get so many people to buy into what she created when mm-hmm. there's a bunch of those people who maybe would have never listened to country music I I think that's a big deal and none of those people that we think of have done when we think of country music have done that not when it comes to the culture that we sit here and talk about maybe in other parts of the country and other parts of the world. And there's plenty of black people who listen to and people of color who listen to country music and did before Beyonce. I'm not saying that that isn't true. Um, Texas alone has a huge um, population of Hispanic people. I'm sure some of them listen to country music. I can't imagine that they don't. Right. So my point is, I just think she made it. She made made it bigger than what it was for a lot of people where it wasn't. And if we could call certain people geniuses for, you know, making an album with really great beats, I think we could call her revolutionary for bringing country music to so many people that would have never listened to country music before. Got it. Well, uh, you know, Beyonce probably will not respond. She probably shouldn't respond. To us? Uh, to Luke Bryan. To I'm Luke. kidding. Um, I just, I just feel like he didn't have to say anything. I also wonder, you know, that's a clip of the podcast or the thing. Mm-hmm. Um. I do wonder, did he delve more into that? Because that's the clip that's circulating. Mm. Um, but I wonder, did he elaborate more? And so perhaps that's something we 
we'll find out and, and you know as things continue uh but we do have another topic yeah and um you know i don't i don't want to gloat but um joker 2 came out today the day we're recording this yeah and um joker 2 has not been getting good reviews and places like IGN have said it's not good. Uh, and now a popular website, which I don't like at all, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, a popular website, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, this generation is Siskel and Ebert. Yeah, but see, that's my problem, though, and I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. But Ron <laughs> Tomatoes' uh, Joker rating has has quote dropped down to forty percent. Joker it's two rating on. has dropped down to forty percent. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, I think there's some things to discuss. Uh, first, let me start by saying I don't like Ron Tomatoes because Ron Tomatoes actually is not Siskel and Ebert. Siskel and Ebert give you their opinion. Um, Rotten Tomatoes is basically a website that collects data from other websites and gives you the average score. Um, I don't like Rotten Tomatoes. I say fuck Rotten Tomatoes. I have seen plenty of movies that are amazing and have like a 27% score on Rotten Tomatoes. And there are movies on Rotten Tomatoes that got like a 90% score and are complete trash. So I do not live or die by the Rotten Tomatoes scores. Okay. I completely ignore the Rotten Tomatoes scores. However, the reason I say I don't wanna gloat is because I told y'all on this podcast that I don't think people care about this Jukebox, mus jukebox musical. And the good word now is that this movie is half jukebox musical, half courtroom <laughs> courtroom drama. Well, not the courtroom drama. And furthermore, uh, the good word is that Lady Gaga ain't even really in this movie. I heard that. Um... And you know, I'm sure her fans are going to go make this, you know, a great opening weekend. Of course. But She's in the movie. opening weekend, I don't think this one's going to go very far. And mm -hmm. even if the numbers say it's great, I told y'all I don't think this is going to be great. It seems like Todd Phillips said, hey, here's my middle finger. I'm going to do whatever I want and just make a crazy weird film. I have no interest in making a great sequel. And Todd Phillips has already come out and said, there will be no third one. Uh, this is my last movie with this franchise. Okay. Well, okay, so I kind of feel like you coming in here to gloat. I said I'm trying not to. Well, you see, you're saying you're trying not to, but you're also saying you don't trust Rotten Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So, do you think it's enough to just? Do you think you need to see it to to know for sure? No, no thanks. But I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to convince me. You know no. What I'm I'm not, I'm just asking because if you don't even believe in their rating system, then, then what does it matter what they said? Like, why does it even Oh, matter? to me, it doesn't. I'm just saying it that matters. now other people are starting to tell y'all the same things. Okay. Yeah. Oh, listen, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Um, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm not sure. But I don't like sing-songy movies, so that's. 15 songs, you know, just a reminder. That's 15. a lot of songs. Quince for the, for the people from Espanol, you know what I'm saying? For the people from Espanol, you, 
It's a joke. It's a joke. Well, it's a joke you can make and I cannot, so. That's right. You see the curls. You see them. If, even, <laughs> even when I used... Even when I used the word Hispanic earlier, I said, you know. Mm-hmm. Probably shouldn't have said that. It was like none of my business here. But I know you were like, yeah, there's a large population of Hispanic people in Texas. I'm sure they listen to country music. And I was like, I know she should have said that. But I didn't say I'm it. sure they listen to country music. I said, I'm sure some of them listen to country music. They live in Texas. There is a certain culture in Texas, the same way there are black people in Texas who listen to country music and go to the rodeo. Like that is a normal thing. And that is that's okay. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm leaving space for there to be some who do and some who don't. I was not making a general statement about what people do in Texas. Mm -hmm. That was not general. So don't don't repeat it back the wrong way and then get me into trouble. And I use the, and I use the term that the U.S. uses to identify people. <laughs> okay. Do you do you think Joker Two is in trouble? Probably, but not really, because again, Lady Gaga is in this movie, and, and it'll be fine. It'll survive. It's, I think it's, Lady. Oh, okay. it'll get it'll get the sales. Maybe it won't. Like you said, after this weekend, there there will definitely be drop off, especially after people have seen it, and because you know, there's the people like you, <laughs> and there's the people like me. <laughs> what, does, what does that mean? The people like and me? I let people like you go to the movies opening weekend. Oh, and come back and say, and then hey. come back and report back, and then I go. <laughs> yeah. So that's true. So you know. There will be some if if it really isn't that great, there will be some drop off. I'm sure because you know by the time reviews come out this weekend, just your friends, your family, whoever went and saw it and came back and said, "Nah, fuck that, don't go." <laughs> There's by the time all of that happens, by the time you know people think piece the shit out of it, gotta think piece it. You you you're gonna see some drop off if it really is that bad. Um, but that remains to be seen. I guess we'll, we can, we can, uh, see how it goes by next Friday. We should have a better assessment of what opening weekend was and what, how it was, how it was trending during the week. I hear you. We'll see what happens with that. Now I want to say this is not an ad. She didn't pay us, but I think the real one here. I think the real one here is Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga is a smart fucking artist. I, I'm going to say this Uh-oh. is a genius move. Mm-hmm. And not only is this a genius yeah. move, but this is straight out of the book of JD. I totally would have done this. Mm-hmm. Lady Gaga put out a Joker 2 album. It is. She put out an album called Harlequin. Mm-hmm. 13 songs. I haven't heard it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Who knows? But I think this is genius. I feel like if you listen to the album, you got to go see the movie. Nah, I disagree with that. But good try, Keith Lee. Let's try it and read it 1 through 10. The movie. Nope. <laughs> you go try it. You, you go opening weekend and enjoy all the singing. We gonna have to talk about it with regards to Keith Lee soon. We won't get into it now, but we will. He's in Japan, okay? okay? So if anybody from Japan is uh <laughs> is watching and made it to the end, put it in the comments. Right, I about to say, I don't, don't have I don't any think thoughts so. about Keith Lee visiting Japan. Let us know. <laughs> we'll circle okay. back. Anyway, the real winner, I think, in all of this is Lady Gaga, who got a fat check Mm -hmm. to do Joker and sing 15 songs Mm -hmm. and not have to, you know, really dive deep into the acting bag. Right, because, you know... And who probably is going to have a multi-platinum album because she's Lady Gaga and... What I want to see is these music videos. I cannot wait to see the Harlequin 
single and music video. Yes, you can. You can wait. No, I'm serious. I'm I'm excited to see it. Okay. Hater. <laughs> hater anyway. ass hater. Yep, I am a hating ass hater. And th- with that being said, I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend and we will see y'all on Monday. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>